All right, so we're doing bomb calorimetry today, and you should have already be, uh, watched the video in the handout. This is the handout right here. And first thing you asked you to do was to watch the video. So that should just give you a general idea of what it looks like in the lab. And later, while we, some of you are working here on the simulations, I'll take uh, you in. Uh, I'll take some of you by turns up to the lab so you can see the bomb, the bomb calorimeter that we have, all right? So um, the tutorial that I asked you to do basically covers the basics for you to understand what's going on with bomb calorimetry. So let me just give you an overview of what those questions involved are in this tutorial. So this first question basically introduces you to the idea that in a calorimeter, you can measure what's called the heat of reaction. And that's just equal to minus C delta T. C is the heat capacity of the calorimeter and its contents. And delta T is a temperature change that you measure. You carry out your reaction in an insulated container. You measure the change in the temperature when the reaction occurs. That gives you the heat of reaction, OK? It's basically, you'll notice here, there's a minus. That minus sign there basically it tells you that what you call the heat of reaction is the amount of heat that would have to flow to reverse the, the temperature change that you observe. So C times negative delta T would be the reverse of uh, the delta T that, uh, that would reverse the delta T, okay? So that's the amount of heat involved. And that already takes care of the algebraic sign, all right, uh, for the convention, for the sign convention. Now, uh, this second question just has to do with uh, a review of what you learned in the lecture about enthalpy and internal energy. Basically, in calorimetry, the, um, the heat that you measure, okay, the Q, the reaction heat, uh, heat of reaction is either going to be equal to delta U or delta H. And if you want, you can put an R in between the, the delta and the H or U to indicate that this refers to the reaction, okay? So this Q is delta U if you're doing your reaction at constant volume and it's equal to delta H for the reaction if you're doing your reaction at constant pressure. All right, so this, uh, Delta U is what you get if you're doing bomb calorimetry, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. And then next week we're doing solution calorimetry. And from that, the heat of reaction that you're going to be measuring is called, is, uh, is delta H, not delta U. Okay, so next week we'll do solution calorimetry. All right, it's constant pressure because when you mix your solution in the calorimeter, it's open to the atmosphere. It's a constant one atmosphere pressure. Whereas in a bomb calorimeter, everything's inside this uh, tightly sealed container where the volume is fixed. All right, so that's the idea in that section, that question. And then on the next question, this introduces the concept of a mean temperature during the reaction. So because during a reaction, you're either, your temperature is either gonna increase, right? So if you monitor temperature versus time, okay? And what you do is, what you would normally do is, as you can see in the next uh, question, you extrapolate the pre-mixing temperature to the post-mixing temperature if you're doing solution calorimetry, or you, you can call this the pre-ignition temperature if you're doing uh, bomb calorimetry. So you would run your, you would monitor the temperature of your sample for about five minutes or so. So that's your pre-reaction uh, measurements. And then what you would do is you try to extrapolate that forward. And then after a while, after the reaction, so if this, if the temperature goes up, after a while it starts to level off. And so eventually you get this long-term trend right here. So you, you based on that long-term trend, you do, an, you do another linear trend line there and you extrapolate. And what you do is see this part right here, this section of your data, that's when uh, the reaction is still happening and may not, it hasn't reached equilibrium yet. You know, you, you, 
the amount of energy, amount of uh, heat generated by the reaction or, uh, or the change in the, adult, in the temperature of your reaction mixture is still changing there. So what you do is uh, you find a point in time during that, okay, where uh, you can calculate what's called the mean temperature, uh, the mean temperature of the reaction. Okay, so basically this is an exponential decay. The gap towards the final temperature follows an exponential decay. So the average, the average temperature of your reaction mixture during that part of the reaction is what you call the, the mean temperature, also known as 3.63 R, or the mean temperature. And the idea there is this. Um, your, this is the standard procedure that's actually used by, uh, for research as commercial grade equipment. You have to determine that. And so uh, your, when you do your Q equals minus C delta T, the Q that you measure is actually the Q, you, you assign that as the Q or, or the delta H or the delta U for the reaction happening at the mean temperature. All right, so uh, in the next question, it walks you through the detailed step-by-step -step, uh, procedure that you can use to determine your mean temperature and your initial and your final temperature. So basically this is the data that I provided in the sample file. Okay, uh, that you can download from Moodle. So you have here, so this is the pre-reaction and this is the post-reaction long-term trend, okay? And this is pre-reaction right here. So this is post-reaction long-term. So what you do is basically, once you've seen a, a linear trend established in the, in the temperature versus time, you fit, fit that to a linear trend line and extrapolate back to an earlier time to find what we call your T final. So this is not your T final right here. That's not the last number you record, okay? And then this one right here, your pre-mixing pre or pre-reaction trend, extrapolate that also to this time right here. So how do you select that time? You select that time so that where that, the axis, if you draw the, axis, the vertical axis at that time, your vertical axis is going to intersect with this curve right here, where they intersect, okay? That's your mean temperature, all right? So you have your T final right here, T initial over here. And the idea is this, is, this should be 63% of delta T, your delta T being T final minus T initial. Why 63%? That has to do with an exponential decay. If you remember an exponential decay, you have like a 30, 63% uh, decay. So if you're down from one to 0.37 in your exp exponential decay, okay, that's one over, 0.37 is one over E. Okay, that's one lifetime. So that's one lifetime of your exponential decay. Basically you're assuming that the response of your instrument to the temperature change uh, follows the uh, an exponential decay. All right, so that's sixty three percent. So we want to be able to get that sixty three percent of delta T above the initial. So your T min, you can say, is just whatever the initial temperature is. That's sixty three percent of delta T. 0.63 times delta T, but you're gonna, you're gonna have to do this by trial and error, okay? This thing right here, you can move this left and right so that this is, because if you do it right over here, okay? Then that's not getting, that's the, that's the wrong team in because this is too big, it's more than 63%. If you do it over here, then that's too small. So you, you're gonna have to play with where you draw that line, that vertical axis so that the intersection between your curve, experimental curve and the vertical axis would give you a mean temperature that basically is, uh, would satisfy the requirement that, what was the requirement? 
the mean temperature minus the initial temperature over the delta T, which is final minus initial, should be 63%. Okay? So, or you can say that the mean temperature must be whatever the initial is, that's 63% of delta T. Okay, this is your delta T right here. All right, so let me walk you through that process. And as we go through that, you should be able to answer the rest of uh, all of these questions here. And this will be, give you a good review of what we, we're going to do. Okay, I need you to be able to, when you're doing a bomb calorimetry activity, you're doing a solutions calorimetry, you're going to get a thermogram, temperature versus time. Okay, so you have, you're going to have four runs, a standard run and an unknown run. So each of those raw data that you get, you're gonna have to analyze it to make, to get a graph that looks like this. For each one of those thermograms, you're gonna need T initial, T final, and the mean temperature. So we're gonna learn how to do that. I've set up a template for you to make it easy rather than eyeballing it. I try to make it as uh, systematic as possible. So let's go ahead and download that Excel file. So this is the Excel file that I, where is it? Right here, this is, this is the Excel template. Okay, so for the thermogram analysis, uh, open it. It's a macro enabled file, so you have to enable, allow it to run the macro. The macro I wrote was a simple macro that makes it easy to just move that axis rather than having to go change the format of the graph every time. All right. So make sure you enable editing and you want to enable content to allow the macro to run. So I already tabulated the data, the sample data for you here in the sample thermogram. Okay, so when you're doing your activity later, you have your for sheet one, sheet two, sheet one and sheet two, you're gonna put your raw data and then you're gonna duplicate the sample thermogram. Okay, and uh for your using and replace this sample data that I have with your actual data. You may have to stretch this out some more, so you may have more data, so you'll have to adjust your, these formulas that you have here. Okay, so basically the strategy I used is this, like this. this uh, so this is the data, okay? Temperature versus time, okay? But you need to uh, draw a trend line for the pre-mix, pre-reaction uh, data. So what I need, what I need, what I did here was uh, this was this is data from um, bomb calorimetry. The ignition was done at five minutes. So at the five minute mark, there's ignition. So I'm going to use the pre-ignition data. So at, at one, two, three, four minutes, I'm going to extrapolate that forward. So all I have to do is put an adjacent column to my data for my pre-ignition. So I'm going to just add this to my graph as a separate uh, a separate series. So what would I do here? If I want, this is just going to be whatever this is, right? So all I have to do is equals that number, right? And then I just copy that down. Okay, so you can see it's uh, covered up. This pre-reaction data has covered up the original data that I have. So basically the same data, right? So now I've already set this up to do a trend line. So uh, you don't have to worry about adding the trend line yourself. Make things easy for you. <laughs> and now this uh, last part right here, you'll notice from 11 to 18 minutes right there. So it's 11 to 18 minutes, you can see this, there's more or less, the, the trend is already linear, right? So you'll notice there's just a slight drop over that time. You have pretty good insulation there, but you don't have perfect insulation. And so you see that gradual drop. Uh, so what we need to do is extrapolate that back to an earlier time, okay? So uh, to get our, our final temperature. So our final temperature is gonna be over here right here, right? And not here. This is not our final temperature, okay? So we need to extrapolate backwards. So what do I do? 
Uh, I made it easy for you too. So all you have to do here is type equals this number, right? So that's the long-term data. So that's F22. So that's 25.516. And then just copy that down. And you'll notice there is the last eight data points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I think I chopped up this figure in your in your tutorial. So your tutorial would only say seven. <laughs> okay. So and then extrapolates it backwards. All right. And then the next thing you need to do is add a smooth curve through here. So when you do this, when you do, if you were to do this manually, you would add a trend line that's a smooth, uh, you would uh, you would set up this data port data series to have a smooth lines, the, the data points connected by smooth line, not uh, not a dot to dot uh, connection, and not a linear trend line either. So here, all I have to do is say equals this number right here. So that's the middle part. And then I can just copy that down. And there it is. Okay. So if you look at the way this thing is set up on, uh, on, on the chart, okay, design, if you look at this, you can see, uh, if you click on this filter right here, you can see that this is series. I can take out series one, okay. I can I can take out series one and series two is just uh, which one would that be? This one right here. So you can make things visible and invisible in, on your chart. Okay. Um, let's see what was it I wanted to show you. Hmm. Oh, the right here. If you right click on this, you can change the series type. You'll notice what I did when I did the series type is I made series three, which is the middle one, to just be a scatter plot with smooth lines through them. Okay. That one. And then series two is just a regular scatter plot, just markers. And then I just did a I just did trend lines, a linear trend line for that. Uh, I mean series one. I'm sorry, it's not no just markers and then series two this is the pre-mixing also markers but then i added a trend line to it and then series four right here is also just markers with the trend line so this is series four all right so i already set those up for you so all you have to do is find that vertical line okay so how do you find that vertical line the first thing you need to do though is let's calculate the equation of these lines, okay? The slope and the intercept of this trend line. So for the pre-mixing, we need to calculate the slope and the intercept. Uh, we don't wanna display the equation here. It looks ugly and uh, it doesn't have the right sig figs anyway. So the way it's displayed. So let's just put the slope and the intercept here so we can use it for doing the calculation. Rather than eyeballing things on the graph, we'll just do calculate the actual equation of the line. So the equation of this line down here, Okay, this uh, trend line at the bottom, the slope for that would be equal to, all you have to do is pretty simple, just say equals slope of, you can see, you, can, you tell it what the y values are. The y values would be these, right? G3 comma G6, colon G6, comma, and then the x values would be the time, which is one, two, three, and four. Close parenthesis, and then there's your slope right there, okay? The y-intercept is also easy. All you have to do is say equals intercept, oops, open parenthesis, okay? So pre-mixing y value, uh, pre-ignition y values, comma, this is g3 to g6, comma, and then the time values for those, the x values, and then close parenthesis. So what goes in for the post-mixing, the long-term trend? So I need, the x and y add uh, the slope and intercept for this, right? So this would be my y. This would be my y. So that's gonna be what? 22 through 29, i, column i, and then f 22 through 29. So what I need to do here is my slope. So what do I type here? Equals slope 
open parenthesis, my y values would be this numbers in column I. So that's I 22 colon I 29 comma, and then my X values would be these numbers here, E 22 through E 29 close parenthesis, and that's my slope, okay? And then finally here, the Y intercept, you just say equals intercept, open parenthesis, the known Y values would be these, comma, and then my known X values would be these. All right. So the known X values are in column E, the known Y values are in column G, H, and I. All right, so now I can figure out, uh, let me just stress, right now my X here is zero. Uh, this is where my X axis is right now. If let's say I want, I want to move my X axis somewhere between uh, five and 10, five and 10 minutes, okay? So let me just move it to at eight minutes. So what, what happens here, so look, it's my axis right here, right? On the left, and I'm gonna change that to eight, X equals eight. This thing right here, this button at the bottom, I've linked that to a macro that would, uh, move this um, vertical axis to whatever you chose you specified in cell C8. Okay, so if I click there, there it is. It is now at x equals 8. Okay, so now I can tell if this was correct, do you think this is correct though? Um, if this was correct, what would be my, what would be my uh, T final? The best way to do this is to stretch this out. Notice I've already added the minor tick marks for you, so it gets easy for you to read. So what's my T final right here? Where does this trend line up here intersect with my axis? It would be at 26.52, right? Right thereabouts. So if I can stretch this out some more. 26.52 something. Look, I can, I can actually calculate that right here. My T final would be based on the Y, X and Y slope and intercept of the top, right? Of the top trend line. I can say this is equal to, my T final is gonna be equal to slope of the post trend line, right? times my X, which is this one right here, at that at, at that at the axis, my X is eight, plus what intercept, which is this one right here, C5. And let's see, that's 26.5, is that about right? Yeah, that's about right, 26.52, 26.52 is five, and then it's five two, all right? Five two nine, so it's more like five three. So it's not quite at the mark right here. It's actually halfway between point five two and point five four. All right. So now, what about this one? How do I figure out what the initial temperature is? Initial temperature down here, where this intersects, you can see is around twenty four point two, point four, point six, point eight. No, I'm sorry, twenty four, twenty four point one. So twenty four point zero two, zero four, zero six, zero eight, zero nine about 24.09. Let's see if that's what we get. So my pre-mixing or pre-ignition uh, trend will give me a Y value at X equals eight of equals the slope for the pre this time. So the slope is this one times X, which is this eight right here, C8, plus the Y intercept, which is C3 right there. And you'll notice it says 24.09, Is that what we have? 24.02, So 24.09, that's date, pretty much 24.09. So now I can easily get T initial and T final. I ha already have the formula there. If I change this to a six, Okay, and then click here. I moved it to six. Look, this is my T initial right here. Now, 
and my T finals up there. So what's my new T final? 26.5, 26.52, 26 26.54. That's about right, 26.54. I can move it to 6.5 and then click here to actually move it. And then you can see your T final and T initial. So your T final and T initial will depend on where you put the axis, okay? The idea is where those trend lines inter uh, where those trend lines intersect uh, the axis well, the vertical axis location. That's where your T initial and T final are. But okay, they may not be right. What's the best pair of T initial and T final that you should use? Okay, you need to know your T mean. Okay, now, uh, logically, you might think, shouldn't you just go back to the actual time of ignition? And that's actually how you were taught in your freshman chemistry. That's how, uh, uh, that's, that's the most logical way of doing things, but uh, somehow they've, all, um, they've developed this uh, protocol where you have to have that 63% uh, rise time, you have to do it right there. So we kind of have to follow that. Okay, because that's the, that's the standard. So uh, it doesn't really make much difference, but since we're doing it the right way, uh, we, ha we have to follow it. So we have to use the 63% rise time to get T mean. So how do, what should my T mean be? Well, let's see. If I know my T initial and my T final, how can I calculate my T mean? My average temperature, what was, it, what was our formula? Our, T, our expected mean temperature should be whatever the initial was, right? Plus 63% of your delta T, right? So what should we do? What should be my expected uh, T mean over here? So here it says T mean should be equal to, it should be whatever the initial is, plus 0 0.63 times this y value right here. Uh, I'm sorry, times delta t, right? So delta t would be this value minus final minus initial. Right? And this one says it should be, 20, if, if it's at 6.5, it should be that, okay? I can, let me just change that back to eight to make a point. <laughs> So just set that back to eight and let's see what happens. So you can see, all right, if we put our axis here at x equals eight, right here, x equals eight, okay, our T final is 26.529, so 26.53, that's correct. And our T initial is 24.02040608024.09. Okay, and that's correct. Okay, so we have the correct initial and final. We have the right initial and final calculated as expected. But our T mean should be 25.63. Okay, let's take a look at this. Where does the curve intersect with the vertical axis? Does it intersect at 25.63? 25.63 is way down here. This is 26.2. So you kind of have to move it. So you have to move it until you get to the right. Uh, you need, you got, you don't have to worry about T, T, T initial and T final. It's always going to be right, right? Provided your mean is correct. So you just have to find that, that match between the mean that you expect and where this vertical line, vertical axis intersects your smooth curve. All right, so how can you do that with this uh, Excel sheet that I gave you? You can play around, just do trial and error. You can just move this number. So you just move this anywhere between five and 10, okay? You can home in on it, just play the pricing game. It's basically price is right. Or, you can do it systematically, like you can move, I have another tool, right? Another macro written here. So you can adjust this, you can move it like by 0.1 every time. So 
let's say I want to drop this down by 0.1. So I'm going to put uh, over here, I'm going to put minus 0 0.1. So every time I click on this button right here, move y axis location by negative 0.1, it's going to drop this location by 0.1. So look, it's eight right now. If I click here, it's going to drop to 7.9. It's going to drop to 7.8, 7.7, 7.6. Okay. If I want to make that uh, minus 0 0.05, if I click there, it's dropping by 0 0.05. If I, I want to make that 0 0.02, if I click there, it's going to go up by 0 0.02, 7.52, and so on. And you can see from your graph, okay, that in fact, let me move this to um, 7.8. 7.6, okay? So you can see this is now, your vertical axis is now at 7.6 right here. Okay, this is six, and seven, that's eight, that's 7.6. So now I can look at my T-mean. What's my T-mean here? It's 26.2, 26.22, okay? 26.22, that doesn't agree. It should be 25. So where should I go? Do I go left or right? I need to go down further. So this is too high, right? The idea here is you can think of it this way. Right now, you're on this part of the curve, it's too high. So if you want it lower, you move it to the left, right? So that's what you're going to do with the thermograms that you're going to collect. And so while you're analyzing your thermograms, I'm gonna take some of you upstairs to, uh, to do your, uh, uh, to, to see the equipment that we have. All right, now what do we need to do though is, is this right here, this is, a, this is a simulation that you have to do, okay? So you're gonna collect your own data. So once you've done this on your, the sample thermogram, you need to collect your own data by going to this uh, website. So the link to that website is right here. So it's also in the handout. Uh, it's not given in the handout actually. <laughs> so uh, I stopped putting links for this on the handout because um, there was a time when it changed links and so the link was broken. So now I just update the link on Modo. Okay, so here, if you click on this one right here, link to the simulation in the handout. So this is the link. So here you can see the uh, a simulation of what happens in, in a bomb calorimetry experiment. So here's a setup of the bomb. This is what the bomb looks like. You've seen that in the, video, in the earlier video. So this is just a graphic representation. It actually tells you step-by-step step the procedure for setting, it, setting up the bomb. So here's your uh, sample holder. Here's your sample right there, it's a tablet. And there's a wire, fuse wire, okay. And then you put that in, you put that here. So you tie your wire there, and then you put your uh, sample in here, and then you put this inside the bomb. It walks you step by step through the process, okay? So anyway, that's how to set up the bomb, how to pressurize the bomb. You hook it up to the oxygen tank and how much pressure you need. And then so it gives you the procedure. And then here's the apparatus overall design. Okay, so you have your bucket, you have your put your bomb in your bucket and all that. Okay, so it tells you how to place the different parts of the calorimeter together. All right, and then here's a simulated experiment. So basically, this is what happens. Okay, so you ignite the sample. So the, by passing, by pressing a button, you pass electricity to that wire. The wire catches, uh, generates a spark that would cause the ignition, the, the burning of your sample. So not only will your sample burn, but part of the wire will also be burned. So you'll need to take that into account when you're analyzing your data and the temperature will go up. Okay, so we're gonna do a simulation. And so what we need to do is choose a sample. So you click here on choose a sample and then you select your sample. The first run is always gonna be benzoic acid. That's your standard run. You actually know what to expect for benzoic acid. 
the purpose of doing the benzoic acid run, okay? This is used for standard run. If, since you're gonna weigh, you know how much benzoic acid you're going to use, you're going to know Q for the sample. And so Q for the benzoic acid combustion, BA is benzoic acid, plus Q for the wire, which you all also know, because you know how much the wire will, how much heat the wire will generate is equal to minus C delta T. And this is what you get from your thermogram, the delta T. The purpose of standardization is you want to know what C is. That's the heat capacity of the calorimeter and its contents. That's also known as the calorimeter constant. So the purpose of the standard run is you want to know what C is. And then you do your unknown run. Okay, group one. Uh, you don't have groupings, so I'll just assign by people. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll make a list later. I'll, I'll post it on Mono who gets to do what. So steric acid, no one's going to do steric acid because I already did steric acid in the, in the video that I made last year to help out the students. Okay, so you can use that as a guide, but you can, uh, Pick one of these for your unknown run. Okay, so we, let's do the uh, standard run first. So pick benzoic acid, take it to the balance. Okay, and then you ignite your sample. What happens when you ignite your sample? Temperature goes up, right? You get temperature versus time, and there's your data. If you actually you actually need to collect the data, uh, transfer the data to Excel. So click on View Data here, right there and lay, out, lay things out so that they are, you can take a screenshot of the data for your simulation. Uh, right, so, okay. So take a screenshot of that, paste that to Excel. Okay, so I think I need to do snip and sketch, sketch here, because I don't have a snipping. I have to go to the snipping tool because I don't have snip and sketch. So snipping tool. Yep. Yep. tool. So take a snip, copy it, and then you need to download the other uh, the uh, you have to just go back to that template that we have okay you can put it in sheet one so paste it here there's the snip so let's call this sheet one what do you call this standard run Okay, you can put this screenshot aside, but you want to copy your data because you want to be able to analyze the data. This is just a picture of the data. So what you need to do is go back here to your data. All right. What you need to do is highlight all of these, the two columns, right click copy, and now go back to Excel and then right click paste. Okay, now you'll notice everything's actually in column A here. So you'll need to split this up into two columns. So what you need to do is highlight this. Okay, you highlight column A and then go to data. And then you do text to columns. And you want to specify the delimiter. The delimiter is what separates the data to columns. So they're separated by space. So you're, you want to delimit it by space. So you'll notice this preview here tells you how the data will be split up, which is good. Okay, so hit finish and there it is. And I can just move this back to the left. Oh, this one, oh, I forgot to split this one up. Oh, I did have that, it's already had that. So I'll just cancel that one. So this one right here, I'll just copy that, I'll cut it and then paste it back over here. So I have that one. So I can get rid of the second row right here. So this is my raw data. So what you need to do now is the sample thermogram you have, the sample thermogram sheet, 
duplicate it, make a copy of it. So I click move or copy, create a copy, and we're gonna put it behind the standard run, okay? So right here, then you can say, you rename this now, standard thermogram. And then what you need to do is copy the data from your standard run, okay? This data you have from your standard run to here, to your standard, uh, to your standard thermogram. I made the adjustment right away. And then I'll have to, and then you need to play with your axis again to locate where that uh, T mean is. So low this, this T mean, T, this mean temperature is not going to be correct. Okay. So you do the same thing. And then you do that for the standard run. And once you've done your standard run, what do you do next? You go back to the website. So now that you've done that, you do another run, you choose another sample, the sample that I assigned to you, okay? So let's say I assign lauric acid, take it to the balance. And here you have the, uh, you have this weight of the sample. This is the water temperature, the room temperature, the mass of the wire before it was ignited, okay? And then you ignite the sample. By the way, when, once you ignite your sample, it tells you how much the wire ways after, okay? Part of the wire gets burnt. So uh, that uh, you need to take into account that part of the wire that's burnt also generates heat, okay? And then again, you can view data. You can actually do some extrapolation here to get a feel for what it's gonna look, what the T initial and T final is gonna look like. So if you click extrapolate here, you can see this is sort of similar to what I set up on Excel, okay? So you get initial and final, except that this doesn't actually give you what the mean temperature is. So you kind of have to eyeball it, see where the mean temperature is. Basically what you want to be able to do is you want this height right here to be 63% of, of this height, right? Uh, this height right here. So if this were correct, then I would say this is Delta T, right? And this is T mean and T, and this is T initial and T mean minus T initial over Delta T must be 60%, okay? So uh, don't do it here. I just, I just trying to show you how you can do it manually the old fashioned way, but you know, I already set up Excel so you can do it more easily. So, my God. Huh? Is everything you can sign in the procedure? Yes, oh. they're all in the handout. So basically, I'm, I'm, I've gone through the entire handout with you. All right. So that's so you need that. So you need to create a thermogram for your for the sample thermogram. You want to be able to reproduce what I have. Duplicate the sample thermogram so you can do a therm the analysis of your standard run and your unknown run. And then what else do you need to do? Those, the standard and the sample are in sheet. Yeah, just give them names, separate names. You have the screenshot and the raw data in sheet one for standard and then screenshot and data for unknown separate sheet and then a separate sheet for the actual thermograms for the standard and the annual. So five sheets, okay? Once you get through the first one, the rest is easy. All right, so now that you've done that, uh, data analysis, okay? So lab performance today, what do, you, what do you need to submit? You want the Excel file showing the thermogram, that determines T final, T initial, and mean temperature for both the standard and the unknown runs. And then in the text box, you write a summary of how bomb calorimeter works, 100 to 200 words. And then for your post lab report, that would be the data analysis that's described here in your handout. Your goal is to eventually end up with the delta U combustion, delta H combustion, 
combustion of your sample and then delta H formation of your sample. And I have posted a video of me working through all of that using steric acid. And that video, where is that video? Right here. Watch these videos for help with the data analysis. Okay, so how to analyze the standard run results, how to analyze the unknown run results. And once you've done your T initial, T final, and mean temperature for both of these runs, you can calculate the enthalpy of combustion and formation of the sample that I assigned to you. So we're good here? Okay. No? <laughs> All right, so that's it. I'm gonna stop this.